like you said, built-in house. This whole paragraph here from this blog post is pretty gangster. <laughs> uh, building the technology described above has been no small feat. And there's a bunch of links here that I recommend people click on. We constructed in-house microfabrication capabilities to rapidly produce various iterations of thin film arrays that constitute our electrode threads. We created a custom femtosecond laser mill to oh, manufacture that's a, that's components a, with micro level precision. I think there's a tweet associated that's with this. That's a whole thing that we can get into. Yeah, this this okay. What are we what are we looking at here? This thing. This yeah. is uh so in less than one minute, our custom made femtosecond <laughs> laser mill cuts this geometry <laughs> in the tips of our needles. So we're looking at this weirdly shaped needle. The tip is only 10 to 12 microns in width, only slightly larger than the diameter of a red blood cell. The small size allows threads to be inserted with minimal damage to the cortex. Okay, so what's interesting about this geometry? So we're looking at this just geometry of a needle. Yeah. This is the needle that's engaging with the loops in the thread. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that, um, you know, thread the, thread the loop um, and then peel it from the silicon backing and then this is the thing that gets inserted into the tissue. And then this pulls out, leaving the thread. Mm -hmm. And this kind of a notch or the shark tooth that we used to call uh, is the thing that actually is um, grasping the loop. And then it's it's designed in such a way such that when you, when you pull out, it leaves the loop. And the robot is controlling this needle. Correct. So this is actually housed in a cannula. And basically the robot is has a lot of the optics that look for where the loop is. Um, there's actually a four or five nanometer light that actually causes the poly image to fluoresce so that you can locate the, the location of the loop. Um, <laughs> so the loop thing, lights up? <laughs> yeah, like? yeah, they do. It's a micron precision process. What's interesting about the robot that it takes to do that, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy that a robot is able to get this kind of precision. Yeah, our robot is quite heavy, um, our current version of it. Um, there's, I mean, it, it's like a giant granite slab that weighs about a ton because mm -hmm. um, it needs to be sensitive to vibration, environmental vibration. And then as the head is moving at the speed that it's moving, you know, there's a lot of kind of motion control to make sure that you can achieve that level of precision. Um, a lot of optics that kind of zoom in on that. Um, you know, we're working on next generation of, of the robot that is lighter, easier to transport. I, I mean, it is a it is a feat <laughs> to move the robot. To and it's far feet. superior to a human surgeon at this time for this particular task. Absolutely. I mean, let alone you try to actually thread a loop in a in a, in a sewing kit. Uh, I mean, this is like we're talking like fractions of human hair. These these things are it's, it's not visible. So continuing the paragraph, we developed novel hardware and software testing systems, such as our accelerated lifetime testing racks and simulated surgery environment, which is pretty cool, to stress test and validate the robustness of our technologies. We performed many rehearsals of our surgeries to refine our procedures and make them um, second nature. This is pretty cool. <laughs> we practiced surgeries on proxies with all the hardware and instruments needed in our mock or in the engineering space. This helps us rapidly test and measure. So there's like proxies. Yeah, this proxy is super cool, actually. So there's a 3D printed skull from the images that is taken at Barrow, as well as this uh, hydrogel mix, you know, sort of synthetic polymer thing that actually mimics the, the mechanical properties of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, it also has vasculature of the oh, person. Cool. Um, so, Basically, what we're talking about here, and there's a lot of work that has gone into making this said proxy that, um, you know, it's, it's about like finding the right concentration of these different synthetic polymers to get the right set of consistency for the needle dynamics, you know, as they're being inserted. But we practice this surgery with the person, you know, Nolan's basically physiology and brain. Um, many, many times prior to actually doing the surgery. So to every, every step, every step. Every, every step, yeah, like where does someone stand? Like, I mean, like the, what you're looking at is the picture, this is in, in, in our office of this kind of corner of the robot engineering space that we, you know, have created this like mock OR space that looks exactly like what they would experience, all the staff would experience during their actual surgery. So 
I mean, it's just kind of like any dance rehearsal where you know exactly where you're going to stand at what point. Um, and you just practice that over and over and over again with an exact anatomy of someone that you're going to surgerize. And, and it, it got to a point where a lot of our engineers, when we created a craniectomy, they're like, oh, that, that, that looks very familiar. <laughs> We've seen that before. Yeah. Man, there's wisdom you can gain through doing the same thing over and over and over. It's like a Jiro Dreams of Sushi kind of thing. Um, because then um, it's like Olympic athletes visualize mm -hmm. uh, the Olympics. And then once you actually show up, it feels easy. It feels like any other day. It feels almost boring winning the gold medal because oh, you, yeah. you've visualized this so many times, you've practiced this so many times that nothing about is new. It's boring. You win the gold medal, it's boring. And it, the, the experience they talk about is mostly just relief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably that they don't have to visualize it anymore. <laughs> yeah, the power of the mind to visualize <laughs> and where, I, I mean, there's a whole field that studies where you know, muscle memory lies in cerebellum. Yeah, it's incredible.